Hi, everybody. Welcome inside the CrossFit Update Studios for another edition of the CrossFit Games Update Show. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez and Pat Sherwood. We are set now for the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games Open. Just days away as we get things kicked off in Brazil. We are turning our attention to the top stories on the women's side of the house as we get set to kick things off here. Before we jump into that, let's just set the table here and show you what the Open has looked like over the past five years as far as participation as is concerned. It's been about 60-40 skewed towards the men, give or take a couple of percentage points. Last year, the women's participation accounted for 43%, men 57%, but it's really the growth rate on the women's side that has been the most impressive. And we talked about this when we addressed the men's top stories, but we'll mention it again here. You know, this is a trend based on what you've heard from people that we can, we should continue to see. You've got some data, Sean. I some, have other all. data, yes. okay? And they're they're close. Alternative facts. <laughs> Leading up to this, Ro and I have been doing a lot of interviews with affiliates, getting people fired up about the open. And okay, it's anecdotal, but the overwhelming majority of affiliate owners that we've spoken to said their class breakdown, affiliate breakdown, is 50-50 men and women, if not skewed more heavily towards a female population. So. We're seeing the numbers increase, and I don't think that trend is a, uh, it's insignificant. It's going to continue. Yeah, and you look at the last three years in particular, 2015, 16, and 17, that those percentage changes, I think that correlates pretty nicely um, with the fact that the women's competition has largely been a little bit more compelling sure. um, at the top end in terms of the final races, the races for the podium, who's going to win. And I think with especially how things were last year uh, and the audience that we have at the broader public with our, our network partners and stuff like that, I think we could see that trend continue as more women tune in and get to see what these women on our sport are capable of. The World Wide Open is just the first part of our three-part season, and it does matter because it often, especially for the women, gives us an idea as to who is going to do well at the CrossFit Games. When you look at the past winners and how they've done at the Games, it is pretty well. Annie Thor's daughter and Kristen Clever tied in 2011. They finished first and second respectively at the games. Kristen Clever then won the Open again in 2012. She finished fourth. Briggs swept in 2013, then won the Open again in 2014, but that was the year that she failed to qualify for the CrossFit Games. Annie Thor's daughter in 2015 won it, but then had to withdraw from the CrossFit Games, so she's the outlier there. And Jamie Green is the other one, won the Open in 2016, and then she decided to go team. And, and that year, Jamie Green obviously had a commitment to her team that she wanted to, to keep, but she also said that she was afraid that she may have peaked too early in the Open and kind of wanted to go team as a result. Do athletes run that risk now that this is so competitive of peaking too early in the World Wide Open? Yeah, I, I, obviously they run that risk, but I mean, that's something that's set into motion well before you actually get to these five open workouts. If, you know, your peak is dictated by your training, your prep, your recovery, your approach, you know, everything that your coach puts together for you in the months leading up to it. And so if you're, if you're peaking for the open, that, those wheels were set in motion long before. Sure, you can maybe overdo it a little bit in your attempts if you're blasting the open workouts four times uh, a week and maybe kind of set yourself back a little bit. But really, I think most of these athletes and most, most of the coaches uh, with their programming are setting their athletes up for, you know, maybe a mini peak in the open to make sure that they get two regionals and another one at regionals as well. But they're, they should be making sure that their athletes are not 100% for the season come open time as well. So I, I think, yeah, it's a risk, but it's not something that they should run into. I almost feel like it's, you're running the razor's edge there. I almost feel like every year when Dave Castro finds a way to make the open more challenging, to make the barrier to entry, you know, that everyone can participate, but the elite can segregate themselves, that if you're not peaking, you, you need to come darn close because we've done these regional shows, how many amazing athletes are now lumped together competing for so few spots that if you do not put forth an amazing performance at regional, excuse me, at the open, there's a really good chance we want to get to see what you're capable mm -hmm. of at regionals because you didn't make it. So it's a very, it's a tight yeah. rope that they're and walking. And don't forget some of the structure changes that we went over with some of these regions. It's going to be even harder now to even to get the next step uh, at regionals. So there are some regions where the Open becomes increasingly uh, important. There also are some athletes, as there are every year, who now have some new homes. Here are a couple of the big names who have moved. Sarah Sigma's daughter seems like the only human being on the planet who decided to get out of the Central Regional. She's going back to Europe, so now the Europe Regional is going to be a fantastic competition to watch, not that it wasn't already. And then Meredith Root and Colleen Foch, they are staying in North America, but, but they're switching regionals as well. So, uh, of the women that have now switched places, who made a good decision and who made things tougher on herself? I think Sarah Sigmund's daughter probably made a, a good decision going, 
She's going back to her family. How can you be upset about that, Sean? Okay, she's going back to her family, but she didn't make getting to the games any easier for herself. And that kind of, that fact eluded me until I was interviewing Annie Thor's daughter. And she's like, yeah, okay, great. We split up the world a little bit different, but she's like, no change in my world. She's like, this year at regionals, you're still gonna have myself, Sarah Sigma's daughter, Holta, Briggs, Helgadar. I'm like, oh yeah, geez, that is gonna be insane. So Sarah Sigma's daughter, is going to make it so that we get a great show out there. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in these moves by these two athletes, Root and Fox, who have the potential to be rookies at the games this year. Root kind of made it harder on herself, at least in the open right now, because remember, Canada, she moved to Canada West. Canada West only gets five spots to regionals. So that's a very slim right. margin. Um, I like the move from Colleen Fox. Obviously, she moved to be uh, with a coach and you know to be closer to some training partners and stuff like that. But I think the South is a largely wide open region, I think, in terms of the women's side of things. Um, outside of Tennille and maybe Camille um, being the two preeminent uh, athletes there, I think she has a great chance to kind of mix things up come regionals time because she is a powerful athlete. As we get into the Open, some names are going to be popping up on our radar that we love talking about them and getting to know the new athletes. But right now, heading into this competition, who are the people that you are paying attention to that maybe off the, the radar a little bit? I'm, I'm guilty of if somebody misses the games or misses regionals sure. for whatever reason, there's so many other athletes making stories that I, they, they go to the back of my mind. And one of them is Brooke Enns. So Brooke did not get to compete last year at regionals the year before that. She won her regional out there in California, did fantastic at the games. So we didn't get to see her in 2017. She's on the path to healing. She is very healthy and she is just, she's a freak athlete. She's one of those athletes that I believe, even if she's quote unquote banged up or operating at 85%, she could still show up on game day and be a huge monkey wrench out there. And remember, she's less than a year removed from, from neck surgery. She found out about uh, the fact that she's going to have to get a spinal fusion in week one of the Open. Yeah. She did 17-1 and then found out that she her season was basically done. But beyond that, I think uh, two athletes that we've mentioned before in previous shows, Kayla Stefano and Haley Adams. I'm really excited to see if we can have basically two teenage athletes on the on the young girls' side qualify for regionals as individuals. Haley Adams did it last year. I think both of them are capable of doing it this year. I think that would be a really cool kind of nod to the competitive level of the teenage girls. Uh, and then Camille leblanc bazinet I think this is a huge pivotal year in her individual career. You look, she wins everything in 2014, but then she goes 13th, 21st, and then a withdrawal due to injury. That's not to say her fitness wasn't phenomenal last year, but things have been trending in the wrong direction for her at the games. I think this is kind of a now or never situation for her to really kind of get herself back into the top. Now, it all gets kicked off on Thursday, February 22nd in Sao Paulo, Brazil, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Kristen Holta and Sam Briggs, the featured matchup there. We're also going to have some local athletes throwing down. It's going to be a blast. You can watch it on games.crossfit.com or on Facebook Live. You cannot watch it in person unless you already have a ticket because it is sold out. We sold this thing out in less than an hour with like minimal advertising. So I cannot wait to see the atmosphere down there in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That's going to be a lot of fun. And remember, if you haven't registered, there's still time. Go to games.crossfit.com, register for the Open because you can't talk trash if you don't compete. Good point. Yeah, that's going to do it for us for today. For Tommy Marquez and Pat Sherwood, I'm Sean Woodland. Get out there, register for the Open, and have fun with your fitness.